gal pals. This is huge. We've made it halfway through our, over halfway through our study through 2 Timothy. God has been so faithful and he will continue to be faithful and finish the work he has started in us this summer. Again, I'm Jillian and I just wanna um, come on this teacher talk today to come back to the response to the text questions that are guiding um, not only your at-home study, but your discussion groups each and every single week. And we ask those three questions, what does it mean? Or what does it say? What does it mean? And how might it change me? Um, in order to um, get deeper into scripture um, and to make sure that we're not falling asleep as we read through it every, every single week and have the ability to kind of sum up what God is saying in a way that we could tell someone else about it. Not only know it in our own hearts, but then be able to, to share. Um, those three questions are very general and that's on purpose. And sometimes it can feel really stretching trying to answer them. So we just wanna acknowledge that and say that a lot of times that, that stretching is felt as we make the switch from being um, someone who is led in Bible study primarily through other human teachers, um, as wonderful as they are, um, still imperfect and human. Making the switch from primarily following those humans in Bible study to being led by the perfect teacher, the perfect rabbi, the Holy Spirit himself. And our job at Dayton Women in the Word is to equip and encourage you for that process. So if it feels different, it's because it is. If it feels challenging, it's because it is. But you're not alone and we're here to do it together. So I just wanted to share a couple micro questions that one of our awesome group leaders, Suzanne, shared with the group leaders that have been really helpful. Um, these are questions she uses in her personal study and also as she leads her group. And I wanted to share them with you that will make it a little easier to come to, um, to make some ground on the answers to some of those bigger response to the text questions. Thanks, Suzanne. Here they are. What does it say? The questions she has here are, what are the main points? What are some key words? Maybe some of those repeated words you're hearing over and over again through 2 Timothy. How could you summarize it in one sentence? Wow, that's a challenge. And what does this passage say about God? We've started to do that with the attributes of God handout, haven't we? So those are the micro questions that can help you come to answer the big question, what does it say? Now the second one is really the doozy, at least for me. What does it mean? Well, we really need to consider both the context, what was happening at the time and who, who was talking, and we also wanna make sure with this question that we use um, not just one interpretive tool, but as many as we have in, in our tool belt. Um, and, and the more we use and the more we combine them, the richer interpretation you will have, um, the richer meaning you will find there. So here are some questions, and I love it because Suzanne really combines a lot of these tools we're learning throughout our study. So what it, was Paul trying to communicate? What did Timothy need to hear? Are there any topics, words, or phrases that you don't understand or wish to understand further? Are there any interesting cross-references that you can find? Choose one sentence or word from this passage and write down how it's said in several different translations. And if you're bilingual or have a different first language, look at it in that language as well. Um, and then see how that um, changes any significance of that word or phrase for you. So that was the, what does it mean? And I just wanna acknowledge that sometimes in epistles, this is actually really straightforward, um, maybe more straightforward than other genres in scripture. Sometimes the what does it say and what does it mean doesn't change all that much with epistles. Um, whereas for 
a narrative or poetry or some some other genre like that you would say kind of what was on the surface level maybe share the story or share what the poem said and then um, you would share in the what does it mean kind of the meaning um, that that writer is sharing that story or sharing that poem to get to so just want to acknowledge sometimes it's not all that different in epistles and then the last one how does or might it change me and I I like the um, this question can be worded in several different ways because it's really about our spiritual formation that is to say who are we becoming uh, we want to become more like Jesus each and every day and out of that becoming we act and so what is inside of us comes outside of us and so really how does this passage make me more like Jesus um, from the inside out so here are some questions Suzanne um, shared to help us get to to that big question what encouragement can I gain from this passage or how does this challenge that how does this challenge or convict me in some way and what is one practical application step I can take this week to put this practice to work in my life so what am I becoming and how does that lead to to my doing how how can we be um, abiding in scripture and then be doers of the word from that abiding with the Lord in his word so I hope that was helpful to you it was helpful to me and um, I hope it's helpful for you to know that we're learning alongside of you and hoping to continue to encourage and equip you as God is is doing that in our own life so never hesitate to reach out if you need help for any reason uh, or if you have a question on something most likely we're asking those same questions and want to seek alongside of you we love you ladies. Let's celebrate this moment. I'm going to do it with dark chocolate coconut almonds from Aldi. I hope you'll join me in whatever way you like to celebrate. We love ya.